I was recently asked what my coaching philosophy is, and if you're going to ask me such a broad question, I'm going to respond with a broad answer. My answer is, it depends. But if I must answer that question as a blanket statement, uh, there are three points of emphasis. Know your craft. Uh, if you don't know your craft, you're basically dead in the water. Uh, I'll be making a video this summer um, describing what's what, what's what's pick and roll, what's back door, uh, what's a pin down, hesitation, up and under, weak side, strong side, block, baseline, etc. I think at least knowing these terms uh, and not knowing what how to execute them, well now you'll know what you need to improve on. And, and this is how we improve. Um, Next, we have discipline, character, and emotional control. I mean, you can know all the techniques and mechanics and terms and lingo and have all the skills, but if you don't have the discipline and the character and the emotional control to execute the proper play, uh, then you aren't as good as you think you are, period. And this is why I, I believe it's very important to be a likable coach and player for that matter. And, and, and have them look up to you and have camaraderie in the team. So, so they may not care about letting themselves down, but they won't want to let everyone else down. And lastly, we have consistency of focus. Um, from my experience in all forms of competition and at all age levels, one of the most difficult things to do is maintaining focus over you know, a half or a game a season, a lifetime even. Um, the best players always bring their A game and I think that's what separates you know a great player from a good player is the consistency. Um, if you've ever tried meditating you're supposed to focus on your breathing. breathing. And it sounds simple enough but go ahead and give it a try. Watch, for, watch how just after a few seconds your mind starts to wander. Now, I was also asked what I believe to be another poor question or generalized question. And I was asked how, how I would beat a certain full court press. I believe it was the diamond press uh, or something like that. Um, and to teach your team how to beat a certain type of press uh, makes me think of the old saying, give a man, to f give a, man a fish and he has fish for a day. Teach a man to fish, and he has fish for a lifetime. Um, to teach a, a team to beat a specific type of press would be like giving them a fish, in my opinion. If you're going to spend an entire practice learning how to beat a specific type of press, I mean, what do you do when your opponent simply switches presses? I, I believe you must teach a man to fish. There is no, uh, there's no press or, or defense that can't be defeated with proper spacing and passing. Um, you teach them that and they can be beat any press that is thrown your way. Um, also from a tactical standpoint regarding this question, if this is a defense that is giving your team a lot of trouble, um, I, you know, I, I'd run this defense myself so that the team, you know, run a scrimmage or something and, and, and let them face, or even in a game, run this defense myself so my team can learn the strengths and weaknesses of this defense and also your opponent will be forced to reveal how to beat this defense if you use it against him so some common coaching mistakes uh, we'll start with over coaching uh, not recognizing a players span of attention uh, you need to squeeze as little words as possible and have the greatest impact on your players um, this is one of the things that keeps me up at night <laughs> is what I, what can I say to each player that will have the greatest impact on his focus, his improvement, and his character. Um, the next common mistake I see is trying to div divide before you can add. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, there may be some players on your team that you're kind of leaving behind because some might not uh, even know some basic stuff like I don't know. Even some of the rules, they might. Some might not even know some of the rules, or like, 
like for example when to intentionally foul um, so you need to be able to evaluate what level your players are on and coach accordingly and give special attention uh, where needed accordingly um, and lastly we have aggressive nature um, I don't I don't like the negativity and the yelling uh, I think it creates for a poor learning environment I don't think the kids respond well to that I think they respond well some need some need it <laughs> some need the carrot and some need the stick uh, but most of them need encouragement excuse me encouragement um, you know need to be forgiving uh, forgiving them for mistakes keeps them in the present moment and and they look forward to getting another opportunity and um, it creates an optimal optimal learning environment and it encourages improvement over adjusting is another big mistake I see coaches making uh, they're usually being results oriented and just because you're losing doesn't mean that there's an adjustment that needs to be made. Uh, you must sometimes admit that another team is simply better than yours and, and stick with the logical strategy and some percentage of the time you're going to win or, or they will beat themselves so to speak. And if you make certain adjustments it better have a logical reason or you're just making adjustments out of desperation. Uh, next we have overemphasis on defense. Um, defense in any form of competition is usually fairly simple. Uh, in basketball it's mostly effort and anticipation and rotations etc. Whereas offense is much more complex and therefore has uh, much more room for improvement and therefore should be worked on more. Um, and lastly we have staying ahead of the curve or not staying ahead of the curve I should say um, a lot of coaches if you're not using uh, the newer tools such as you know using an iPad with the Jess playbook software or you know YouTube channel is a very useful tool um, things like this I think you're falling behind the curve um, you know when I see a coach out there on the court saying you go here, you set a pick here, make a back cut there, you know, those kind of things, and the players get lost in that. But with like the Jess Playbook software, it's very tangible for them, and and they love it. Now, to give you an idea on the, the type of practices I like to run, um, I don't really like to drill one specific um, technique uh, I think there's much more efficient ways for them to learn that specific technique while learning other skills at the same time. So for example, instead of doing a, a, a pivoting drill, uh, we'll run a practice where no one's allowed to dribble. So now they'll learn how to, to pivot because they'll be forced to uh, without being able to dribble. They'll be forced to pivot and find angles for a pass and protect the ball using the pivot, uh, etc but now they're also learning other things like how to get open without the ball and you know they're still going to be learning rebounding and they're still going to be getting conditioning this way so I think it's a much more efficient way of practicing and and the kids like it much more and it keeps them uh, more engaged and it keeps their attention more than running drills I know when I played basketball and I'm sure a lot of other people feel the same way that eh, not, not many people enjoy doing the drills So the offense I like to run is a zone offense. It's um, it's so simple to understand, and and therefore it allows it to be so consistent. Um, and it can get more complex uh, depending on your your t team's capability of understanding it. Um, every single player on the team will get it. There won't be one player that struggles to understand it. Uh, it, it innately teaches them the game of basketball. It teaches them about spacing. Uh, it allows them to react to what the defense is doing instead of running, uh, you know, a whole bunch of sp specific plays that they have to learn. Uh, similar to the triangle offense, it, um, you know, in, in that aspect, it, it's catered to prevent the most common mistakes like following the basketball, over dribbling, traveling, double dribbles. It's catered to prevent those.
kind of mistakes. It's just a wonderful offense, especially for you know the, the youth, the high school level and below. Um, and and this is just the tip of the iceberg uh, of the zone offense. You know, I'll have a video posted if you guys want to get a, a more in-depth look at, at the zone offense. Uh, because of my background of of many different forms of competition and and constant strategizing over the years, uh, I consider myself an expert in game theory, and I think I'd be a a, a great fit for head coach. Uh, but I, I have also been playing basketball my whole life, and as well, and and I I believe I'd make a great player development coach as well. Um, I mean, no one will work harder. My fire for this is so intense. Uh, it's a passion. It's not an obsession. It's a passion, and I guarantee no one will work harder than me because it's impossible. There's only 24 hours a day, and I'm strategizing all 24 of them, and I think that's pretty obvious. So how can you go wrong?